So our next talk is from the lab of uh, Professors Sahimi and Sasis uh, and Ryan Kirchhoff. Ryan's going to be telling us about core network simulations in uh, nanoporous membranes. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ryan Morhatch, and today I'll talk about the core network simulation and preparation of nanoporous silicon compact membranes. So, first, I will talk about the motivation and objectives of this project, and uh, then I will talk about the membrane pre preparation methods. Mostly, I will emphasize on chemical vapor deposition technique and uh, give a little, little bit of introduction to continuum membrane formation model. And finally, I will talk about the core network simulation and summarize my talk. So, let's start with motivation. Uh, as you know, in the recent year, there has been a considerable effort to produce a, a high temperature resistance membrane. And the polymeric membrane that are available right now, uh, they show unsatisfactory in terms of performance in the high temperature, especially when we have steam. So silicon carbide with special characteristic that it has is a great candidate for such application. So some of the applications that it might have is in hot gas filtration and clean up, liquid filtration, and catalytic membrane reactors. So our objectives are to prepare hydrothermally stable membrane, uh, non-core silicon carbon membranes, to be used in the separation of gases which contains hydrogen. And the longer term of our project is uh, to use this membrane in catalytic membrane reactors, uh, which used for hydrogen production from the water gas shift reaction and steam reforming reactions. So we are currently using two different methods in our lab to prepare this silicon carbide membrane. The first one, which is mostly my emphasis, is chemical vapor deposition. And the second one, which my dear colleague Bauman is working on, is pyrolysis of pre-ceramic precursors. Uh, which today my talk would be mostly on the chemical vapor deposition and modeling of that. So before I start talking about the chemical vapor deposition, I need to go a step backward and talk about how do we make the supports for this uh, membrane. Actually, the supports will give the physical strength to the nanoporous uh, silicon carbide membranes. These are the homemade support that we are using and. Uh, we using we making them by uh, pressing the silicon carbide powder and using different uh, pressing aid and sintering aid, and then we sinter it in a high temperature in the presence of carbon. And the note, the good thing about our support is that they're the same; they have the same material as the membrane itself. So that that will avoid any uh, mismatch that might cause between the thermal uh, expansion of these two materials. So now let's continue on the preparation by the CVD. We use the triisopropyl silane as a precursor to deposit on the uh, silicon carbide uh, membrane. The silicon carbide support at temperature between 700 to 750. See, this right here shows the apparatus of our experimental. Uh, the helium or argon in any inert gas will flow the uh, TPS, which is evaporated here, into the reactor. and. Uh, the TPS will decompose into the, react in, uh, into the pores and uh, forming the silicon carbide. So you, the graph right here shows the membrane actually. As the TPS decomposes, it gradually starts filling the pores and finally the permeances of the gas is going lower and lower. So what happens inside the reactor is that the uh, carrier gas of TPS goes into the reactor, they move to the boundary layer, they react and the port and they diesel from the surface, the byproduct diesel from the surface, they go back to boundary layer and goes to the exhaust of the reactor or region takes up. So this graph shows uh, some experimental data for argon and helium permeances, the first graph on the left. Uh, so as you can see at the beginning of the these are the permeance versus the deposition time. Uh, at the beginning of the deposition, both argon and helium uh, permeances start decreasing at the same rate. And then as the TPS start gradually filling up the pores, 
uh, helium being the smaller of two gases, uh, still can diffuse through the uh, larger fraction of the unplugged pores. And that's caused, so this uh, clogging the pores will affect the helium less than argon. So that will cause the selectivity of two gases goes up. So to better understand the CVD process, uh, we try to model the uh, transport of these gases while the position. So these are the governing equation. We try to solve those by the final element method using the uh, adaptive computational time step and adaptive computational grid size in order to be, make the most changes in the parts that we have the most pore size change. And uh, we use two different diffuse. We consider two dif different diffusivity for this equation. One is Knudsen, and the other one is Tinder. And we saw that most of the changes uh, in the porosity, in the pore size, happens at the first two micrometer of the membrane. So basically, what happened is this is the relative porosity versus the uh, thickness of the membrane. So you can see up to this point, we have the most changes. And uh, our results, our simulation results, uh, they're in great agreement with our uh, experimental data. So uh, for different shapes of, uh, this is for disc shaped membranes and this is for tubular membranes. So actually we get the same trend and same result for the, uh, for both of the shapes. And also we consider the different operating condition to fit our data, which was again in the agreement with our experimental data. So the last part of my talk would be about the pore network simulation. So we basically uh, develop a three-dimensional network in order to study the uh, transport of the gas, transport and selectivity of the gases. So the effective pore radii are distributed according to the given pore size distribution, and we study the effect of connectivity of the pores, uh, and as well as the pore size distribution broadness to study the transport of these gases. And we use the dusty gas model, which is based on the Maxwell-Stefan equation, to describe the core level transport process. And we include, again, Knudsen, hinder diffusion, and also we include the viscous flow. But I'm going to talk about that later on. So we use two different pore size distribution models. The first one is the, uh, similar to most experimental uh, membrane pore size distribution, and the second one is Gaussian, and we use different average pore size to study the effect of average pore size, the RA, and we uh, assign R minimum to be the minimum pores, uh, the same as molecular size of helium. So, uh, and also for the Gaussian, we change the variance to study the broadness of the pore network. <coughs> So we consider the Knudsen for the diffusion term. We consider the Knudsen diffusion, which is dominant when the uh, collision between the molecules and the pore walls are important, and actually for pore size as small as seven angstrom. And hindered or configurational diffusion, which is significant when the pore size are even smaller than seven angstrom. And also we study the viscous flow. But the simulation shows that the viscous flow doesn't have that much contribution to our uh, process, to our transportation, unless you broaden enough your pore size. So then that will come into play. And but anyway, we consider that. So we did the mass balance for each node and each pore. Basically, what happened is that we have a node and there are different pore connected. There are certain amount of pore connected to one node, and we discretize each core to six points, and we solve the equation by finding difference method. 